So there's a lot of big news this week. In the 48th side, there's a shuffle. And on 46th side, I'll keep it quiet until then. So you have to watch in order to find out. If this is your first time, top right of the screen, you will see what section you're on. 48, graduated, or 46. And you can always know when the newest videos are available by subscribing so you can keep up to date with the news every single week. First up, let's start right off with Kohaku. And if you don't know what Kohaku is, actually different artists come together and perform on this stage. It is usually the top artists who go there. And this time we have Kiaki Zaka, Nogi Zaka, and AKB. As I said before, that the sister groups aren't participating this time. But they are participating kind of with AKB. And that is because they are actually in there in representing AKB. Because in this lineup we actually have 18 members that are from AKB and the other groups have 7 people representing them except for Stu48 which only has 2 of them. So as all of us anticipated there will be other groups there representing their own in AKB. Which leads me to another thing and that is the shuffle that just happened recently and it happened during the anniversary stage. So we will get to see what has changed. First of all, the big important thing that everyone is crazed about and is actually really happy about is that the canon members are actually not there anymore. That is, original members from other groups going into AKB aren't there. We have Ryoha from SKE, we have Haruko and Sakura, Mio, Nako, Nagisa, and Miru. Now this doesn't include the members that are in AKB and also in other groups. This includes Kashiwagi Yuki and Okada Nana. But a lot of people are excited that it was actually like crossed out that AKB will stay purely AKB and not involving other groups into it. Which some people have really been wanting for for a long time. But there was a lot of switching around and something really to note is that a lot of Team 8 members actually are now canon positions, well canon even though they're part of AKB, into the AKB and 4 teams. Including one that sticks out that's actually now the captain of Team A. And that is Okabe Rin who is actually now the team captain of Team A, which a lot of people were surprised about seeing that there are other members there that are more likely to become the team captain, but there are some that are still, you know, congratulating them on actually being there. And another thing to note is that actually some canon positions have actually gone into the regular team rankings, so you get to see some 16 gen in there as well. And of course with all this team shuffling, there are some shuffling of the team captains, and as I said, Team A captain has changed to Okabe Ren, Next up we have new Team K Captain Komiyama Haruka who has actually now become the captain and it's a big role for her. So hopefully this means a little bit rise in popularity and see more votes in the Sosenkyo than we did this time. Next up is Team B with Takahashi Juri who used to be the captain for Team 4 but now is a captain for Team B so let's see how that changes. Especially since it's only like two members who were originally Team 4 and has moved on with her. Oh man, thinking about it, it must be tough for Haruka because a lot of those members in Team K are actually original Team K members. And for Team 4 we have Murayama Yuiri who has actually been in Team 4 so hopefully she has a little bit more experience with a couple of members that are still in Team 4. So this is definitely an interesting change of pace and maybe one we needed especially with Team B being the longest list of members and Team A being the shortest. I'm not sure if it's always been like that, but that's something I noticed that's like 5 members difference. So with so many Team 8 members now, so many Ken members in there now, and all the reshuffling, please let me know what you guys think about the shuffle and who you're excited for seeing in different teams together. Maybe like a beauty team in Team A that has Iriyama Ana and Katorena, or maybe a different team that you're excited for now. And plus I'm really curious to see what you guys think about these captains and see exactly how you expect them to turn out. Do you think they're right for the positions or not? And now to the sister group that actually has more of its members back, not canon position, which is NMB48 with brand new music videos. First up we have Futsu no Mizu, who that actually has been released. And watching it through, it's a little bit boring, the song's a little boring, but I do like the sequence of when they're riding on the horses, so definitely watch it for that. And next up we have Dokokade Kiso, which is actually a pretty fun music video. I definitely recommend watching this one. This one's about them being like cat people, but it's not like super obvious they're cat people. And they're running this like fancy hotel and then this robber tries to go in, but then they're trying to eat him. It's definitely interesting. I recommend watching that. It's a really fun music video, 
so watch it alone for that. I actually kind of forgot what the song sounded like, so it might be a little bit forgettable, but I imagine it's a fun song if the music video was that fun. And next up, we have another song that came out, but it actually came out for sale with NGT48 with their second single, and I have the first day results. At second place, we have 121,334 copies sold. Second, because it actually lost to a K-pop group, but nonetheless, it still got a lot of sales. So with this, I hope a lot of more opportunities come up for them, and I mean, they could only go up from here, so hopefully the next single, even though this single is good, gets better and more publicity, that way they get some more stuff sold because they're actually a really solid group. And next up, I want to talk about NMB member Tanigawa Airi, who actually has started her own YouTube channel under the name Sayuri. Now, I'm not too sure why she actually picked that name, if anyone knows leave it down below. But it looks like she'll do what it seems like daily or at least weekday videos and she's actually rolling this big dice to see what the next video is. So that's an interesting concept right there. She's already done like try to drink the most coca-cola you can in like a minute I think. And then she tried like a makeup video and then she tried typing without looking at the keyboard. So it seems like it's a fairly like low level stuff like easy to do every day. So if you're excited for that, and she has a really great personality for YouTube and even in general, so I definitely recommend checking that out. And next up is actually my Yuyu and Yukurin joining up together to actually make a book together. This is going to be like a collection of like different things they thought about and like they're just gonna put it all out there. It kind of reminds me of Yamato Saika's book that I talked about like a long time ago, but this one is actually about them two writing it together into one book. And if you're interested in that and can actually read Japanese, that comes out December 23rd, which is fairly fast, which means they've probably been writing this, or they probably like wrote different sections and then like an editor is going to come and put it all together or something like that. But nonetheless, that should be interesting to see. Maybe people could study their Japanese with it. But that does it for 48, let's go to graduated members, starting off with Kizaki Yuria, who's actually going to a new agency. And that agency is Tristone Entertainment Incorporated, which I think is actually fairly popular here too, or at least like a different branch of it, if I'm thinking of the right thing. But with this, she will actually go and do her actress career that she's wanted to do. And she's gonna start off with a stage play in February. So look out for more details on that. And next up is a former Team 8 member by the name of Yamamoto Ai, who is in a drama. Now, although she doesn't play the biggest part in this drama, she actually is like not even in the support cast. She still will be in it, so it still is important. So look out for the drama Toroma no Kiss, which actually comes out the 17th of January. And another drama that a former AKB member by the name of Nagao Maria is going to be in is going to come out. And the name of the drama will be Funohan, and it looks pretty dark. There's a trailer down in the link below. And watch it, check it out, see your impressions of what she's going to play as. And this one actually looks pretty cool. It's only going to be four episodes, but nonetheless, it still looks pretty good for her. And that starts airing the 22nd of December if you want to check it out. And another drama is with former SKE48 member Matsu Irena, who seems to be a part of a 10 episode drama that seems to be like a continuous thing because it has 2018 in the actual title, and it's the sixth volume of it, and that is the name Nagoya Iki Saishu Resha 2018, and it will be on Nagoya TV starting January 15th, so that is one to look out for. Nothing too deep on information, probably if you watched other ones you'll know kind of what this is about I imagine. Seems to be very like episodic, but like the volumes are episodic. And the last bit of graduated news is actually with Wasamin who is releasing a new single. This single will come out the 27th of February and will actually be her 7th single. If you haven't listened to her former songs, actually go and listen to it because she's a great singer and I recommend just listening just for her voice. That does it for graduated, let's go to the 46th side. Let's start off with something that Oricon did which is actually a fan favorite of artists of this year. And I want to start off with number 19 who got 36 last year, Nogizaka 46. And as we go down the rankings we have number 28 who was number 84 last year, that's a big jump. That's Kiyakizaka 46 and then down we go a little bit more to number 31 where last year it was 35 with AKB48. Now, these are big jumps which actually seem pretty good and since they actually interview like 20,000 people, it is a good sign to see. Now, it just kind of matters who those 20,000 people were, but for them to be in these rankings out of that many people who actually answered the survey, 
is really impressive. So again, Nogizaka 19, Kiyakizaka 28, and AKB at 31. With the biggest jump of Kiyakizaka, and actually a pretty decent jump in Nogizaka. And next up, I want to talk a little bit about my Oshiman, Shirai Shimai, who has been announced as the photo book queen. Now this is because of her photo book passports, which you can actually see at the top right of the screen, where I did a critique on it and I actually went to Los Angeles to look for the location she was actually at. So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and check that out. But the reason she got awarded this is because she has sold 228,783 photo books. That means that many copies are out there and people are holding them in their hands. Now that is a lot and it like outweighs the rest of the members by a large margin. She is the highest selling female photo book in history in Japan and that's super big deal. I mean general photo book it has to go to like someone left in the comments in a previous video where it was like way back when and it sold like millions so that one doesn't really count but just being a solo photo book Shirai Shimai top. And speaking of photo books, we actually have a new photo book that's been announced if there haven't been enough already, but this one's actually exciting. Not like the other ones were exciting, but this one's especially exciting. It is Ito Marika who's actually releasing her final or first photo book. I imagine if she releases other ones, they'll be more fashion oriented, but this will actually be after she graduates. Since she graduates this month, this will actually come out in February. February 20th is the day when it comes out. And this is actually shot in Hong Kong, so it'll be interesting to see what images come out of this. There's been a little bit of previews, nothing too largely giving of what it'll be, but knowing Ito Marika, this will probably be a little bit more fashion and a little bit of her goofy side. So I'm definitely excited for this and I'll definitely pick it up and I just can't wait to see what it's about. And last bit of news is actually with Imaizumi Yui, who is now an exclusive model for AR. That's another Kiyakizaka member who is now an exclusive model, and this is super cool because she's actually in there with Hori Miona, because, you know, the magazine has different models and Hori Miona is one of the models, so we might see a collab of them together. Oh, but wait, there's one more news that I talked about from the beginning that's super exciting. Actually, if you follow me on Twitter, you will see I went live on Tuesday. Well, actually, this Tuesday, check out my Twitter again, and you'll be able to see me live again, because it will be start of something exciting. It will be with me, Boy from Basugatsu, and Jimmy from Swaltaku TV, who will be doing a 46-centric podcast. So, that's exciting news. I know this 48 talk, which I've actually been on before, and they kind of touch on 46 sometimes, but we will focus mainly on 46, you know, not to step on any toes on the 48 side where they rule that domain. <laughs> Here, you don't worry, I still will talk about 48 and 46 equally, just like how Boy will talk about on his stream every week with all the idol groups, so go ahead and check that out if you like all idols. And check this out if you like 48, 46, 48 talk if you want to watch longer content about 48. And the future podcast, which has no name yet, about 46 centric content. It's more relaxed, but yet informative, and it's super funny because we actually all know each other and mess around with each other a lot. So if you want to see a little bit more relaxed, a little more humorous and informative, then go ahead and watch that if you want to know more about 46 or what we think about it. And that'll cover like new news, as well as our opinion on different stuff that happens. So definitely be on the lookout for that. I'll put a link to the channel down below that we started, and on Tuesday, check out for my tweet to see when it actually goes up. It'll be around like 5 or 6 p.m. LA time. So go ahead and subscribe down below to keep up to date with these channels. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast channel to know when those live streams go up. They're going to be live streams and recordings. So go ahead and check that out. And go ahead and leave your comments down below about the shuffle. And if you want to watch the podcast and any recommendations really that what should we talk about, go ahead and leave those down here and I'll tell that to the rest of the people. So I hope you're excited for that and excited for what's to come. Oh, by the way, next Saturday there will be no news video because I will not be at home. I will be at the Necronomital concerts, which all of you should go to, and be over there supporting them and actually taking a little bit of video. So you'll be able to see that when that video comes out, I'll release it on my channel. And there might be behind the scenes for that on my Patreon when that comes out too, so keep an eye out for that. And that does it for this week. As I say every single time, thank you all for watching.